The 2000s were simply an incredible time for video games. From the year 2000 up to 2010, if you just take that chunk right there, there's an overwhelming amount of great single player game experiences that are considered classics now. We tried to narrow it down to a list of 20. It was hard. We're probably missing something, we know, but it's a good excuse to just talk about some cool games. And because there are so many games out there that we couldn't fit, we'd love to hear from you guys in the comments what else should be talked about. So let's get counting down with number 20. Prince of Persia The Sands of Time was an excellent revival of the classic series. In this, you play as the titular prince who starts off pretty arrogant and eventually becomes a hero, not only saving his kingdom, but like space and time itself. Using the dagger of time in the game, you're able to rewind when you make mistakes, either in combat or missing a jump and falling into a pit of spikes. Spending some Sands of Time with the dagger causes a cool rewind effect where you see your prince saved from sudden death, and it was just a real cool mechanic, not to mention the fact that it was one of the first games to really kind of introduce cool parkour moves like wall running and how that all tied into really tight level design that kind of made the platforming and the princes jumping and flipping and climbing a lot more of a navigational puzzle than you'd expect. It had a really great level of detail, moody atmosphere, some downright stunning memorable moments, and it was just a really good solid top to bottom video game adventure. It was also a good kickoff point for more cool Prince of Persia games. Personally here, we still think the Sands of Time is the best one, but that's just us. We love the Prince of Persia and uh, we miss him. Bring him back. Next over at number 19, we're gonna get weird for a second. Mention The Simpsons Hit and Run from 2003. This is probably one of the best Simpsons games uh, besides the original arcade games. And it was a time where The Simpsons were very much taking game franchises and putting their own Simpsons spin on it. And with Hit and Run, they did Grand Theft Auto, basically. You run around open world Springfield levels, you steal cars, you drive around, you go through races, you break stuff, you collect stuff. And really, it was so satisfying. In 2003, the Simpsons were still really at the height of what they were doing. I know the show is still going. It's probably going to go longer than I'm alive at this point. But this was just a great, satisfying to play and hilarious Simpsons adventure. It's kind of become a cult classic at this point. Honestly, though, I think if you walk up to any person who played games in the 2000s and ask them about hit and run, they'll probably know what you're talking about. Now, next over at number 18, going for a bit of a deep cut, 2003's Freedom Fighters. Now, we wanted to give some love to IO Interactive. Uh, their Hitman games are obviously incredible. We love them, but we wanted to highlight one of their different projects today. Freedom Fighters, which we've talked about in many videos before, is just a really fun single player action adventure game. You start off as an average Joe plumber in New York City that is suddenly invaded by Russia, and then New York City is completely occupied by Russian forces, and you kind of find yourself rising up through the ranks and becoming this revolutionary hero fighting back against the occupying forces to take back your city. As the game progresses, you become more and more of a hardened battle leader, throwing Molotov cocktails, shooting down bad guys, and actually grouping up and commanding troops of your own. This game had some fun shooting gameplay, a little bit of strategy and tactics. Some of that stuff hasn't aged well, but the overall atmosphere, the presentation, and just the feeling of adventure, this really cool kind of Red Dawn style game really just was special. And we don't have anything like this today. Now, next over at number 17, we have The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. This was released in 2006 in the early days of the Xbox 360 and PS3 era, and it felt like a big deal. A lot of us had played Morrowind, and we absolutely loved how vast it was, but Oblivion really just took things to the next level with an incredibly lush open world environment filled with castles, forests, dungeons to explore, side quests to pull off, your own character to build however you wanted. It absolutely was top to bottom an incredible RPG. Skyrim is the thing. Everybody loves Skyrim. Everybody talks about Skyrim, but Oblivion, Oblivion was really something. It felt incredibly unique at the time, despite kind of sticking to a very typical fantasy style vibe and look. The way it played, the way you adventured, the way you explored was just so easy to get lost in, and it's just truly special. Now, next over at number 16, we have Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. This released in 2004, and while we would love to fill this list with more Metal Gears, uh, we decided to stick with three because 
It's awesome. There's not too much more to say about it. Snake Eater really shook up the stealth formula of the Metal Gear games, uh, giving an element of camouflage because you're in the jungle, as well as some slight survival elements like tending to your own wounds and feeding yourself and hunting in the jungle. It was really different and handled some things in really out there ways, but it still all managed to feel distinctly Metal Gear with it. incredible music, an incredible score, and some really good characters and really, really memorable boss battles. For some people, Metal Gear Solid 3 is just kind of like an assembly of cool stealth encounters uh, punctuated by just some of the best boss battles and games ever, really. Straight up, the Metal Gear Solid games don't miss, but that shouldn't be news to you. Next over at number 15, we have Final Fantasy X, released in 2001. This for a lot of people, was their entry point into the Final Fantasy series. This was the first Final Fantasy game to feature full voice acting and fully 3D environments for the most part, and it really helped make it an incredibly immersive adventure. You become invested in these characters very quickly. You want to save this beautiful world of Spira. And thankfully, on the gameplay side, battles were pretty cool. They went back to a more traditional turn-based style, but with a really good level up system called a Sphere Grid that gave you a bit more options and a bit more choice. And overall, it was just a very cool, very memorable Final Fantasy game. It might not be everybody's favorite Final Fantasy game, but it's a damn good one. It also had a spinoff called Final Fantasy X-2, which a lot of us dunked on at the time, but in hindsight, actually was also pretty decent. Next over at number 14, we have The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. This released in 2002 for the GameCube and gave you a traditional Zelda game like you'd expect, but with an incredible new visual style. The cartoony art style really did wonders for refreshing Zelda, if you ask us personally. Uh, also, structuring it around islands and you as Link sailing around to these islands uh, just really amped up the sense of adventure that Zelda games have always really pioneered. They took it to the next level here. Wind Waker was creative, charming, fun, but also just a satisfying traditional Zelda game. Next over at number 13, we have God of War 2, released in 2007 for the PlayStation 2. This game was absolutely incredible. The first God of War was damn great, but 2 really upped the ante in so many ways, from the bigger spectacle, the larger scale, even more awesome boss battles, to story-wise, seeing Kratos at the start of the story at the top he has become the God of War. And then from there, things completely collapse in a crazy Kratos way. The original God of War adventures are so awesome and over the top and so much fun thanks to that awesome combo-based hack and slashy combat. Some of the big action set piece moments in this game are still totally memorable today. And that's saying something because we see some crazy stuff in video games now. Next over at number 12, we have Deus Ex, the original Deus Ex, uh, released in 2000 on PC. This was an immersive sim that took things to the next level. Every area, every environment in this game gave you so many decisions, so much player agency, almost a staggeringly complex way of tackling every situation. We actually don't see that level in games anymore. It's something that Deus Ex like truly crushed back in the day. And for a long time, a lot of games were really struggling to try and keep up. Next at number 11, we have Resident Evil 4, which released on GameCube in 2005 and really marked a shift for the survival horror series. This time around, things go more action-oriented with a, for the time, revolutionary over-the-shoulder third-person shooting system. It still was tense, it was still survival horror-y, your shots had to count and you'd run out of ammo and stress out a lot, but this is where Resident Evil went a little more over-the-top crazier monsters, a cooler and more capable protagonist, but also thankfully still just brought many memorable, creepy, weird, action-y horror moments that we love the series for. Apparently Capcom is remaking this game and we're really curious to see how they do that because we think Resident Evil 4 is still to this day, top to bottom, pretty perfect. Next over at number 10, speaking of perfect, Shadow of the Colossus, released in 2005, was just a game experience Unlike anything else we had seen at the time, you play as a lone adventurer with his horse setting out to slay these giants in this open environment, seemingly to save a princess. It gets a little bit deeper than that, but the game overall is artfully simple from the user interface to the control scheme to the actual objective. The whole game is structured around riding through massive 
beautiful, lonely environment on your horse, just kind of getting swept up in the atmosphere, the mood, the vibe, and finally coming across a giant who's usually just out there minding their own business and then you slay them. Basically, the game is just like a big open adventure where you wander over to some boss battles and you fight them. And every boss is a complex thing that you usually have to scale and climb up through a pretty good platforming, jumping, grab system. And it gets pretty wild. It goes places. If you've never played Shadow of the Colossus, please fix that immediately. Next over at number nine, we have Bioshock. Released in 2007, this game kind of took its immersive sim roots from System Shock and really moved into a completely new, wacky first-person shooter adventure. You find yourself in the underwater city of Rapture that has completely collapsed. The citizens are crazed. There's weird things going on. And you kind of stumble through a strange sci-fi body horror adventure, solving puzzles, shooting your way through, upgrading your weapons, and getting some superpowers along the way. The underlying themes and philosophies behind Bioshock and just what happened to the people living in this creepy city and why they were there in the first place are some of the most interesting parts of the game. We don't have time to really dive into that here, but it was also just fun as hell to play. It was cool. It was creepy. It was weird. It was wacky. And still, there's nothing else like it. Now, next over at number eight, we have Metroid Prime. Released in 2002, this was a huge, huge shift for Metroid. I mean, think about it. It's, this is a first person shooter. This is not something we really expected from Metroid, but it works really, really well. The Metroidvania formula translates over perfectly here. You're still Samus, you're still blasting things, you still got rockets, you're still morph balling, but now you are directly in her shoes and you got to explore these weird, lonely, mysterious planets. And it just all felt so much more raw and visceral. Metroid Prime kicked off a couple of Metroid Prime games that are all really, really fantastic. Next over at number seven, we have The Sims. The original Sims, released in 2000, was like a phenomena. Everybody played this addictive, strange life simulator game where you create a character, you guide them through life where they're cleaning their home, getting a job, meeting friends, earning money, and also uh, building a house along the way. It was a weird and strange novel concept for a game at the time, but it still sticks. People are still playing Sims games to this day, but the original shock and just surprise of how cool and weird and addictive the original was is unforgettable. We had a hard time like narrowing down what type of Sim or Sim City game to include on this list, but considering the cult phenomena that was the original Sims, we think it was worthy of placement here. Now, next over at number six, we have Silent Hill 2. Released in 2001, this thing really stepped it up from the first game. Silent Hill 2 is so beloved and so top to bottom great that the first game is often forgotten, although I will say the first game is still pretty sweet. Silent Hill 2 is an incredible effort in survival horror mood and atmosphere and tone. There are still no other games like this that capture that environment, that underlying gross pit of your stomach horror feel. Silent Hill 2 really starts off as just a guy in a spooky town and a mystery, and it really goes places. Horrific enemy types, unsettling environments, and a really interesting story means it's still worth checking out. Now next over at number five, let's talk Fallout. Fallout 3 was released in 2008 and totally reinvigorated the Fallout franchise with the new Bethesda spin, and it was great. But we're gonna cheat a little bit on our list. Uh, we didn't wanna push too far if, up until 2010 here, but Fallout New Vegas released in 2010 and it was absolutely incredible. A lot of people love it much more than Fallout 3. And despite all of its bugs and strangeness, Obsidian really built an incredible Fallout RPG that people are still playing and embracing to this day. From dealing with the factions to exploring this really strange and out there environment that we hadn't seen in a game like this previous, it is still absolutely iconic. Now down to number four, we have Diablo 2. This was released in 2000 and it's an action hack and slash RPG that is still basically the one. Diablo 3 is incredible, but Diablo 2 has its hooks in people like no other game. Diablo 2, people can play 
endlessly just because that core gameplay, that character building, the satisfaction of everything of it is so much fun. It and its expansions are really just representative of Blizzard really in their prime at the time, where Blizzard games were really kind of like their own culture from Diablo 2 to StarCraft. They were crushing it and Diablo 2 has legs like no other game. I know there's the new Diablo 2 Resurrected, the kind of remake remaster that people are playing, but right up until that came out, people were still playing Diablo 2. And that's special, that really says something. Now down to number three, of course, let's talk Halo. Now Halo for many people is known for its multiplayer, but the original three Halo games released in the span from say, uh, Halo Combat Evolved in 2001 to Halo 3 in 2007, really were great single player campaign experiences. A lot of people out there play the Halo games for the story and they were just great, unique experiences. The original Halo really kicked off and really kind of revitalized console first person shooters. None of them quite clicked like this one did, and then from there, all bets were off. Master Chief's original adventures are downright incredible games. We love those campaigns. Now, next over at number two, let's talk Grand Theft Auto. There's a lot. Grand Theft Auto 3 released in 2001, then we had Vice City, then we had San Andreas, and everything that came with those incredible games, all the way up to Grand Theft Auto 4, which released in 2008. I don't know what else we could say about Grand Theft Auto games at this point, other than that they almost completely ushered in a new era of gaming with, of course, open world exploration. But the impact on gaming culture aside, the games themselves were just an absolute blast with so many memorable moments, weird characters, crazy missions, some annoying missions, and really well-designed open world game cities. The Grand Theft Auto games still to this day have a really good sense of place. Couple that with just a different time periods, different regions, and of course, radio stations filled with great real world license tracks. Every single Grand Theft Auto game was an absolute experience and really defined the 2000s for a lot of us. Now down to number one, it's Half-Life 2. This released in 2004 and was the follow-up to the original Half-Life that really blew up and it continued Gordon Freeman's adventures, thrusting him into a completely new and strange sci-fi world. The depressing City 17 and its surrounding regions. Once again, there's science fiction intrigue, there's aliens, and lots of really, really fun shooting, uh, some physics-based gameplay moments, and tons of great puzzles. From the incredibly iconic Ravenholm sequence, to cruising around on a dune buggy, or just pissing off combat soldiers, Half-Life 2 was absolutely iconic. Like I've said with pretty much every game on this list, you should absolutely play it if you never have. Those were 20 games, it was really hard to narrow it down, but we also got some bonus games worth mentioning. Of course, Max Payne, along with Kingdom Hearts 2, and Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, Eternal Darkness, Need for Speed Underground, and Batman Arkham Asylum, which yes, believe it or not, released in 2009. Man, we're getting old. Those are some games that we wanted to talk about, but even with these, there are still so many worth mentioning. So we wanna hear from you guys in the comments. What are your favorite games from the 2000s? If you got your own list, your own personal top five, top 10, top 20, we wanna hear it. If you had fun just kind of yapping about old games with us today, all you gotta do is click the like button. We would very much appreciate that. It helps us out. And this is our favorite type of video to make here. But if you're new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.